everybody and welcome. Amen to God. We're back in the house of the Lord on a Sunday morning. What a joy it is to be back. I'm glad to see everyone here today. What a joy. Well, let's stand all over the house. If you've noticed, we do not have screens this morning because Microsoft is Microsoft, all right? But uh, nevertheless, y'all know this one. He set me free. Amen. Listen, we've been cooped up in a house for I don't know how long. We've been uh, we can't go nowhere, 50% restaurant, this, that, and the other. Can I tell you that there's something that God did for you if you saved? He sets you free from the bondage of sin. He sets you free from having to go into hell. And what I'm saying to you this morning is this. You may, we not may have the screens, but I believe we know that we've been set free. Amen? Y'all sing it. I know y'all know it. If you don't know it, act like you know it and sing it. Amen? Just hum it. Praise God. Do something. Help me out. Or we'll be sing- I'll be singing four or five specials this morning, all right? Anyways, let's sing this this morning. Once like a bird in prison I dwell, he set me free. Once like a bird in prison I dwell, no freedom from my sorrow I fell. But Jesus came and he listened to me, and glory to God he set me free. What? He set me free, yes, he set me free, and he broke the bonds of prison for me. Well, I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see, for glory to God he set me free. Now I am climbing higher each day, darkness of night has drifted away. But my feet are planted on higher ground, and glory to God, I'm homeward bound. Oh, He set me free, yes, He set me free, and He broke the bonds of prison for me. Well, I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see for glory to God, He set me free. On that last one now. Goodbye to sin and things that confound. Not of this world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working and I'm praying to and glory to God I'm going through. Help me now. He set me free. Yes, he set me free. And he broke the bonds of prison for me. Well, I'm glory bound. My Jesus, to see for glory to God, He set me free. Amen. Free indeed. Amen. There ain't nothing like being saved, is there? Praise God. You know you saved today? You know you saved today. Amen. Listen, if you ain't saved today, today's the day of salvation. Huh? We have assembled together by divine appointment today. Right? How many of you came to be encouraged? Uh, How many of you came to worship the Lord? How many of you came to hear a word from God? Yes, amen. God's stirring us today. We're going to open in prayer this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Steve Sweat if you would to open us in prayer, my brother. Yes, God. Yes. Yes, God. Yeah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. 
Yes, God. Touch him. Yes, God. Yes. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for how you bless us. Anybody blessed? Okay, men, we are. Well, I got just a few announcements we want to hit this morning. We want to get this out of the way, but we want to make sure we mention it, all right? First off, uh, we announced this Wednesday night, if you were online or here, but we're announcing it again. We're going to have a special called business meeting tonight uh, for the purpose of electing the laypersons for the nominating uh, committee. And yes, we have missed some months, and so it seems hard to believe we're even talking about it. Amen? But we are, and so uh, we need to get moving. God expects us to be on time and in order. Amen? He's a God of order, and so tonight we'll call ourselves to business. Now, that means that tonight is not skip night. Hear me? <laughs> hey, I tell you what, I thank God. Listen, I'm serious about this now. I thank God well, we don't announce business meeting. Everybody just stay home. That ain't the body of Christ. Now the body of Christ meets together, takes care of things together, right? And the way God would have us to do it, amen? And uh, so we want you to be here for that. Then the following uh, Sunday night, we will also have special call business meeting uh, in the PM as well uh, to discuss our new deacons, uh, Ken Barber and Henry Sanders, okay? And so I know you'll want to be a part of that as well. Uh, thirdly, I want, to, I want to remind you just quickly, and we've got a lot today. Welcome to Flag Day, by the way, at uh, Southside, right? we got flags everywhere. Praise God. Hey, we can be proud Americans and Christians. Amen. Amen. Thank God. So we're going to be celebrating Flag Day today as well. But I want to mention something to you as we're getting back together because it was a praise this past week as I was looking at it. Folks, you all know we have had a building campaign going on now for, what, a year and a half maybe? Something like that. And we stepped out on faith and even put it within our budget this past year. Well, I just want to report to you today that as of right now, there is over $53,000 in the building fund. Now, I, I don't know about you, but that excites me. Listen, what God is doing. Hear me, what God is doing, okay? So I, I, that, that should just encourage us all to see what He's doing, His hand. And I want to remind you that uh, as we're doing that, I want to remind you, we got some new folks. we got Tide Plus 5 that we give, right? And we also got our 1090 coming up. And I thank God for the body of Christ who steps out on faith with the 1090 every October, okay? Lastly here, and we're moving on, VBS begins July the 12th, all right? Here's the thing. If you've not signed up, Sister Jennifer is looking for you. All right, look at her. She's looking around. Look around her. All right, she's looking around for everybody, all right? <clears throat> so if you've not signed up to be a part of VBS... Don't miss out, all right? It, we're not going to try to do it. We're not going to try to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it, amen? And I know without a shadow of a doubt, because we're going with expectation, God's going to save some people. God's going to save some people. So you, uh, you see her sign up and get involved in that. Listen, we're going to continue in worship this morning, church. I love you. Let's do it together, amen? We're almost there, maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Y'all imagine the words are up there. Home of the soul, amen? Home of the soul. Let's stand together for our offertory hymn. Home of the soul, if for the price we have striven after our labors are over. Rest to our souls be given on the eternal shore. Let's sing it together. If for the price we have striven after our labors are over, rest to our souls are given. Rest to our souls will be given on the eternal shore. Home of the soul, home of the soul, beautiful home. There we shall rest, never to roam, free from all care, happy and bright. Jesus is there, guess what? He is the light, oft in the storm. Lonely are we, we are sighing for home, longing for thee. 
beautiful home on the ransom beside the crystal sea. As we are standing in glory, never to die anymore, we will be singing love story, living on heaven shore. Home of the soul, home of the soul, beautiful home. There we shall rest, never to roam, free from all care, happy and bright. Who's there? Jesus is there. He is the light, oft in the storm. Lonely are we, we are sighing for home and longing for thee. Beautiful home on the ransom beside the crystal sea. Amen. I don't know about y'all. How many people live that song? Amen. Amen. But Jesus is there. Jesus is there. Well, listen, we've come to the portion of service in our worship and giving. And praise God as the body of Christ we give together. Amen. And I'll ask Brother James if you would ask a blessing upon the offering this morning. My brother. Tell you what, I think Sister Judy's got them keys warmed up this morning. Don't y'all think? Amen. What a blessing that is. Well, right now we want to dismiss all the children to Children's Church, all right? And uh, Betty is going to be taking them over. And today, as she's really pointing extremely, that means she's going all the way to the Vincent building, all right? And so you won't pick them up from the, uh, from the fellowship hall. You'll pick them up from the Vincent building, okay? And, uh, and look at there, where's April? April, I did not forget, thank you, thank you, did not forget April. Alright, <laughs> uh, listen, I want to say a word. Uh-oh, they stay, oh, he brought me pickles. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Y'all know, y'all know. All right, listen. I listen. I I for. I just want to say this. I thank God for the visitors. Yeah, you know, I told you I want to take this second. I just want to thank you for being here. What a blessing it is to Southside, not just this pastor, but all of Southside that you are here with us. And I just want to say this. Thank you, thank you for being with us today. And I pray God bless your heart richly. Okay, we're gonna continue in service, brother. It is Flag Day. And at this time, Brother Gene, if you'll make your way uh, to the stage here, he's going to read uh, um, a, uh, I guess it's a story, but some information on Flag Day. And, uh, and then after that, Ben's going to bless us with a song uh, about a folded flag. So I hope you all enjoy this, Brother Gene.
Good morning. Can you hear me? My wife told me to speak slowly and plainly. And my pastor told me don't speak long because he's got a trap door under here. <laughs> I'm in dilemma. Well, first of all, I thank God. I'm a Christian. Born again. Born way to heaven. And second, I thank God. I'm American. Born in America. Our flag, red, white, and blue. White means signifies purity and innocence. The bloom means vigilance, perseverance, and justice. And red means hardiness and valor. Margaret Manning, I don't know if anybody heard of her, she was credited to, to make the first flag. Red and white stripes. Now, where the stars are located is where it had a Union Jack. The Union Jack was nothing but the British flag. All right? So a man named Francis Hawkins, he's the first designer, I mean, first signer of the Declaration of Independence. He went to George Washington. He says, I'd like to change that Union Jack to a five-point star. So... General Washington and a few other men went to a seamstress named Betsy Ross. That's right, Betsy Ross. If you children went to high school, know who she was. And she, they, she created a flag. Well, she finished it early part of June in 1776. Make sure I'm right. Yeah. All right, and, uh, and the flag was first flown at Brandy, Wine, River, and Battle there near Philadelphia. And it was approved by, on June 14th on 1777. And President Harry Truman, I'm sorry, yeah, President Harry Truman signed a declaration, I mean, a executive order, June 14th will be Flag Day. Now, in 1892, a socialist minister named Francis Bellamy wrote the first allegiance to the flag. I'm going to read it to you. I pledge allegiance to my flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, and liberty, and just for all. Well, in, uh, in 1923, the United States Congress changed one word from my to thee, and they had these words. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, indivisible, and liberty, and just for all. But in 1954, President Eisenhower asked Congress to add two words. He said, here it goes, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Hey. Hey. Under God, indivisible, we're lifting just for all. I thank God for that, under God. Amen. Have you ever wondered, have you been to an event you sing the national anthem. He said, have you ever wondered, how did it start? How did it do it here? Who wrote it? Well, let me tell you. In uh, eight, the war of 1812, the year 1814, British took over Baltimore City. And they took prisoners, which was they were citizens, just like me and you. And they took their ship outside of Baltimore Bay, not too far from Fort McHenry. So the citizens went to the British government and asked them to release the prisoners because they were not soldiers, they were citizens. And British government says one for one will swap prisoners. So September 13th, Early in the morning, Francis Scott Key went to the British ship and saw the commandant. 
and Commandant knew what the orders was, but he told Francis Scott Key, I cannot do it right now. And Francis Scott Key said, I thought we had an agreement. He said, look to your horizon out towards the ocean, the Baltimore Bay. You see ships. They're British ships. There's hundreds of British ships. And they're going to bombard Fort McKinley. The only way we're not going to bombard it if you take the flag down. And Francis Scott's keys, let me talk to the prisoners first. So <clears throat> Francis Scott Key went down below deck and talked to prisoners. And the prisoner says, no, no, let the flag fly. That flag right there, which I'm proud of. Francis Scott Key went back to the comrades. I said, no, we're not. And they bombarded 25 hours for Kennedy. 25 hours. They bombarded. He watched the records right there. Burst in there. That's why he saw a flag all night long. Yes, it ripped that flag. But next morning, at 25 hours, the flag was still flying. Before I tell the rest of the story, let me tell you this. Only four Americans got killed. 24 wounded. But here's the irony of it. 330 British soldiers, prisoners, got killed in that battle. They killed their own men. And he's watching that stuff. There's four stanzas. And here's what he wrote. Oh, say, can you see by dawn's early light what so proudly we held at twilight's last beam. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through a perilous fight or the ramparts we watched was a gallant stream and the rockets red glare and the bombs bursting in air. Yea, he proved through that night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, can you see? I'm sorry. Oh, say, does that star spangle better? Yet way, or the land of the free and home of the play. Now he wrote that poem. But here's some John Stafford Smith. Anybody heard of him? He was the composer of the music. But here's the irony of it. John Stafford Smith from London, England. I thought it was funny. Uh, okay. Okay, President Woodrow Wilson. Sign an executive order that Star Spangled Banner would be the national uh, anthem of the United States. Thank you. We've got a lot to be proud of. She's not perfect, but she's, she is home. And we do fly that flag proudly, as we ought to. Matter of fact, I never forget what Heath said a couple years back when he was here. Ben's getting ready. His daddy taught him, and y'all remember this, y'all was here, that you always you stand for someone who worked in the military, and if any chance you got, you paid for the meal. You know, I think we ought to do that as a country. We ought to take care of them more often than we ought to, and then we do. I mean, VA is wonderful, and that's a good thing they've got. But it's a sad shame when we've got our veterans living on the street somewhere, ain't got nothing to look forward to. And they, fit, they, they fought, bled for this country, and we're sitting here and, you know, just in, in luxuries, and there ain't got hardly nothing. We ought to be ashamed, but at the same time, we ought to pray for them. We really ought to. Ben, you sang this song for us this morning, brother. Yes, ma'am. Sure thing. Amen. We love you, Sister Trish, and continue to pray for your family. If y'all ever need anything, you should be sure to call, that's for sure. We love y'all. Brother Ben. Uh, I was going to sing this song on Memorial Day, but I didn't have the time to practice it. But since it's called a folded flag, I figured it'd be appropriate for the day. <laughs> Hey. 
gave them the right to burn it, bled red, white, and blue till he died. Soldiers pulled it from his pine box, handed it to Grandma, and it caught her tears as she said goodbye to a man who gave everything he he would tell like when the ram fell down and they stormed Utah Beach we were scared but when we seen them and the eagle screamed for freedom you could hear the thunder when it started raining steel so many gave everything they had It's proudly on my mantle, so I never take for granted those who stood and served, no questions asked. Some say wars, we don't need them, but they sure do love their freedom. And I'm thankful for the ones who breathe their time we'll have another special this morning and it's sister uh gail you'll make your way up sister uh sing a song this morning so we met last uh last evening yesterday evening about 5 30 and um and she gave me her song i knew what she was singing and uh she got i didn't tell her this before she left you, yeah come on up sister yeah. um she didn't uh i didn't tell her that. i told Bree when when they left um She started singing, and it was almost angelic. I mean that with all my heart. I really do. Bree and I was just kind of floored. Uh, and not, not meaning in a bad way by no means, but it was just like, my, my. That, it's, it's unbelievable. So, sis, you come and sing that song. It's all yours. Amen. He was calling me Gail, so I didn't know he was talking to me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought he was talking to Gail over there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the opportunity. When God wants us to do something, we have talents or whatever we have, we should use it for Him. 1 Corinthians 15 says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. I'm looking for the coming of the Lord. Aren't you? Amen. Amen. May this song be a blessing to your heart.
never been I can almost hear the trumpet As Gabriel sounds the call And at the midnight cry about you I'm ready to go y'all ready to go I mean let's just hey Lord Jesus come hey come now Lord Jesus I'm ready if that scares you in this moment you just come on down hey I tell you what there's plenty of people that'll lead you to the Lord right now I guarantee you that you ain't saved why don't you just go on and give yourself over to God let you do something let him do something inside of you Luke chapter number 12 today 
Luke chapter number 12. Now I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you not to worry about the clock. All right? Now y'all know. Come on now. Hey, let's go ahead. I mean, if we really, you're already here. Let us just be encouraged. Amen? Let us not worry about what time it is. It's God's time. Right? It's God's time, and it's our time for training. It's our time for discipleship. Amen? All right, God's got a word for us. Here we go, Luke chapter number 12. All right, Luke chapter number 12. We're going to begin in verse number 31. Verse number 31, the word of God says, For all these things... Oh, verse 31. Y'all ready? Here we go, restart. All right. Jump the gun, jump ahead. Here we go, all right. Verse 31, But rather seek ye... The kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Some of y'all need to realize that today. Verse 33. Sell that you have. I lost some of y'all right there. And give on. Provide yourselves bags with wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not. Where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupted. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You ain't got to like it, you ain't got to believe it, but it's the truth. Verse 35, and we're going to begin in our text here. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, I do thank you, God, for this day. God, I thank you for what my heart has already experienced, God, today. God, how you have, God, touched my heart, God, reached down into my soul, God. God, I thank you and praise you. But God, today, right now, in this very moment, God, God, we are a people in need. God, I pray it every single week, God, multiple times a week, We are a people in need, God. And God, I pray that today we realize our great need, Lord. God, first of all, our need for you, Lord. God, without you, man, the greatest need they got is salvation. So God, I pray you touch their heart today. God, I pray that if it be your will, God, you save somebody today. And God, for the downtrodden, the discouraged today, God, I pray you touch them. God, open up their heart, God. Do a work in them, God. Do a healing today, God. God, I trust and God, I believe. Help us, Lord. Set aside the cares of this world. and God, get concerned, God. And care about what you have to say. God, draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. And I know some of you scholars are already wondering where I'm going with this text because you realize this is uh, discussing the second coming. All right? The second coming. But there is much application for us today. Much application for us today. And if we'll take it to heart, how many of you know the Word of God is a living Word? It is a living Word. And it's alive and well and applicable today. Not just tomorrow, just not in the past, but in the present time and day. Folks, we're living in a dark world. We are living in a dark society. And the truth is, if we're going to make it, we've got to be right with God. I say we've got to be right with God. We've got to be wholly consecrated and set apart to be used by Him. You say, preacher, you've been on a theme. No, I've not been on anything. It's on what God's got us on. Hear me today, it's what God's got us on. So today, before you turn it off, you might want to turn it on. 
You might want to turn it on and see what God has got for you today because this is applicable to us. Now we've got to remember at this current time, you've got to remember the Jews of that day. <laughs> they couldn't understand what Jesus was all about. Huh? They were looking for that earthly kingdom to be set up. And folks, i got to tell you, too many today still looking for an earthly kingdom. I mean, some people not only looking for an earthly kingdom, they're looking for their own earthly kingdom. And can I tell you, the only kingdom we need to be worried about is the one in glory, the one to come, the one that I will as a saved, born-again child of God will be a part of. Amen, and if you're saved, you will be too. You will be too. But let's look at living in this current day. You say, preacher, this is Luke chapter 12. And Luke been gone a long time. <laughs> it's applicable today. It's applicable today. And I tell you what, if we allow it to sink into our heart, God just might do something with us. Amen? How many of you know we ain't got to come up with fancy words and titles and all this? Hey, it's the Word of God. It's the, hey, I looked at two words. I said, girded and burning. Girded and burning. You say, preacher, I don't want to be girded. I don't want to be burning. Well, let's examine a little bit. You might change your mind. You might change your mind to what the Word of God has to say. Listen to me. Yes, this is a, a picture of a master going to a wedding at night and the servant not knowing the time that he'll come back. But I tell you, he is coming back. It's applicable to us today. Jesus is coming back. John chapter 14. He said, I will come again. The question is today, are you prepared for His coming? So many people think they're going to go through the ground. So many people think they can wait to the last minute that they can be on a deathbed and accept Christ. Can I tell you, you may not make it to your deathbed. You might be too busy dying to get saved. And the fact of it is you can't get saved without the calling of the Holy Spirit of God. So today, if God is calling you, then today is your day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Not next year. And can I tell you, because some of y'all sitting there saying, well, I'm already saved and here I am, I'm hearing about salvation again. Listen, as long as you're coming and you're a part of this body, you're going to hear about salvation because there's a lost and a dying world going to hell. God help us. God help the church. And spit on myself. Huh? A lost and a dying world going to hell. I don't know about you, but that, that puts some action in my step. It ought to put a lot more action than it does. Amen? We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Think about this this morning. It is so applicable. Are you truly ready? Let me ask you something. How are you dealing with the darkness that's around us today? How are you dealing with the darkness? That's, hey, listen, and if you think it's going to get any lighter, can we just... Hey, can we just make sure you understand? Listen, the world is not going to get any better than it already is. Hey, hey, listen, this ain't this didn't just start yesterday. Huh? This has been going on for a while. Amen. I mean, we can go back to Sodom and Gomorrah and see what we're living with today. Oh, you say, preacher, it ain't that bad. Why don't we examine ourselves? I think about how many murdered babies has been in this country. Huh? Now listen, I love the I love this country, but we got work to do. And as a child of God, we've got work to do. I'll be honest with you, we've truly been silent for way too long. We've been living in fear for way too long. You say, preacher, I've never lived in fear, then why in the world are we so quiet? Has it been that, has it been that we live in fear, or is it that we're just, uh, we ain't got enough ump? Hear me? I'm talking about surrender sold out to God. I ain't talking about in arrogance. I told somebody one time, I said, you know what, I'm bold about it. I'm going to be honest with you. When I surrendered to God, I surrendered to God. Now, I played monkey games for a while. I didn't answer the call, ran from God. But listen to me, when God finally got a hold of me, and I finally got a hold of what God wanted from me, I'm bold about it. I'm not arrogant. They say, you're going to be bold. You're going to be arrogant. No, listen to me. Now, if you're arrogant, that's one thing. But if you're bold for Christ, that's totally another. And it's time that the people of God get bold. It's time that the people of God get a backbone. So how are you measuring up in the darkness of our day? Let's look at what the Word of God has to say. Because this is applicable for us today. I want you to notice, number one, if you're a note taker, you might want to take notes. This will help you today. Number one. Number one. Look with me at verse number... Well, we'll read from 31. I love to read the Word. Amen? 
But rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. I do want to say this. We've, I said this weeks ago. We've got to get our mind right. We've got to start thinking about heavenly things. Somebody said that statement. You can be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Tell me how that is. How, tell me how you can think about God so much that it's a bad thing living on earth. Huh? <laughs> you, know the, you know what that is? That's a cop-out for us today. That's a cop-out for us today. We think if we get too close to God, we're going to be too holy. We're, hey, we're going to, be, we're, going to be, uh, we're going to be something that can't go talk to somebody else about the Lord. Let me tell you something. You let God fill you up. And I'm not talking about you getting no more of the Spirit than you got when you got saved. We talked about that this morning. But I'm telling you, I'm talking about total surrender to God. You get totally sold out to God and watch what He does with you. You can't, listen, you can't get too close to God. You get to glory. You'll be close as you're going to get to God. But you can never be too close to God. Verse number 32. Look here with me. You, hey, listen, we need help in this day. You didn't come for it. You might want to write it down because you're going to need it. Here we go. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Number one, it's time that people swallowed the fear not. I said it's time to swallow the fear not. I, I tell you, this world, and listen to me, you want to turn the news on? You want to, you might will get loaded up with fear. I, I'm serious. I mean, first, it was a virus. And I'm not going to, I ain't going to talk about current events, but I'm going to mention this because this is what's real today. You notice first, it was a virus. I mean, virus and everything's going crazy. And for everybody that's a believer in the virus, I'm telling you, the virus is real, all right? I'm not trying to denounce the virus, okay? So nobody send me no hate mail, all right? What I am saying is look at how it's covered. Huh? Look at how it's covered. Look how the truth comes out about things. I'm going to leave it right there. But see, not only was it a virus, hey, but now it's rioting. Now it's rioting. I told you a couple weeks ago, I'm wondering what it's going to be next month. And I tell you, when you consume yourself with these things, hear me, when you consume yourself with these things, they will consume you. They will consume you. Listen, what we choose to focus on, what we choose to pay attention to, is what will, will consume us, folks. If you want to be concerned with fear, then go right ahead. There's plenty of it out there to have. You can dish it out all day long. There's plenty to be afraid about. But what does the Word of God say over and over and over again? Fear not! That's what God says. Fear not, folks. If anybody ought to live with no fear, it ought to be the child of God. Listen to me. I ain't got to be afraid of tomorrow. Yet I've lived there. Sure I have. Sure you have. And listen, some of you sitting here today, some of y'all battling that. I don't know who you are. I'm looking around at everybody because I don't know who is and who ain't. But I know this, God didn't lead us here for not to be here for no reason. Huh? And some people, they're so tore up inside, scared to death of what tomorrow holds. But what does the Word of God say? Fear not. You need to rest in who you are. I mean, what does the Word of God say? Read on in verse number 32. He says, fear not to begin with, but what's next? Fear not, little flock. Now, I love that He says this. I love that He says this. Because so many times, as the body of Christ, as a believer, we feel like we are all alone, that we are small, that we don't matter, that there's a majority out there much bigger than us. But can I tell you today, that majority might be bigger physically. That majority might have more numbers. But can I tell you today, without a shadow of a doubt, that when you're on God's side, and God is on your side, you are the majority. And today the church is well, the church is safe, because God is the majority. You see, we do not have to worry about what's going on in the world. Not when we've got Jesus. Why? Because all the only thing we got to do is just be ready. Just be ready. Oh, that's where we're going today. Number one, fear not. Fear not, little flock, for it is. And why fear not? Because it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You know what that spoke to my heart and said? 
God wants the best for me. Why can't we rest in that? God is enough. God is enough. I mean, either God is our protector and provider, or either He's not. But many times in our own heart, we're the one who blocks that. Don't let me think I'm alone this morning. Hmm? Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You know what else we see in that? A plan. A plan. (laughs) God's got a plan. You know what we all need to do today is decide to let the world do what they're going to do and us do what we're going to do. Huh? If it all falls apart, guess what? God is still in control. God is still in control. Because guess what? I'm in the hand of God. Listen to me. Let me ask you something. When you're in the hand of God and you are sealed by the Holy Spirit of God, what you got to worry about? I mean, we're talking about the ones, hey, who moved upon the water. I'm talking about the one who put the stars in place and then we get worried about the things this world's going to do. God help us to have faith. To have faith. Fear. Not. Then we look at the second point here. 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Number 33. This is where I lost y'all earlier. Get back on track, All right. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. You know what we need to do today? Is get our treasure in the correct place. Number two. Number two, hear me. Get our treasure in the correct place. We have got to get off of our will and get a hold of God's will. Hear me. I ask you today, contemplate part number two. Where is your treasure? Better yet, let me ask you this. Where is your investment? What are you investing in today? Hmm? I say, what are you investing in? And most people want to think about your 401k. I mean, really? And it's great to plan. It's great to have retirement. But what are you doing for the Lord? Now you say, preacher, I'm about to turn you off because you're talking about money. No, I'm talking about, I'm talking about a whole lot more than money. I'm talking about, listen, all the money in the world, listen, don't, listen, God don't need your money. You just heard the preacher say that. Huh? God is not worried about your money. He owns your money already. Yes. But I wonder, where's your investment? Where is your spiritual investment? There are so many people, listen to me, there are so many people who die Listen, feeding on the milk. They never get to the meat because they never grow. There's no investment in the things of God. There's no investment in their prayer life. There's no investment, listen, in coming and receiving the Word of God to receiving fellowship. God help us to draw close to Him. God help us to draw close to Him. we got to get our treasure and our investment in the correct place. And it's not enough to talk about it, folks. We do a lot of talking. We need to do a lot of acting. And I don't mean fake. I'm talking about real acting. Action in our lives. It ought to show who you belong to. People are not look at your life and see that you've invested, listen, in a wasted life. I'm talking to you, child of God. Why in the world would we settle for the scraps when you can have it all? Huh? Preacher, look what I'm going to have to give up to if I do that. If 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 I really begin to spend my life serving God and diving into what God's got for me. Preacher, how? I mean, look at what I'm going to have to give up. You ain't going to give up nothing. Nothing are you going to, what you're going to have to give up is sin. Oh, that's a big one right there. Let me, let's all just swallow together. Huh? Yeah, you're going to have to give up sin. Listen, where are you going? Listen, if, 
If it's between you and God, it's a sin. God never looked for second or third place. And listen, you want the blessings of God on your life? And listen, I've been here, I've lived this, Brother Steve. Hey, I've done my own thing. I can remember there was times he'd be asking me to come to Sunday school. Come to, listen, I didn't come to Sunday I didn't want to be burdened. I didn't want that burden. Come on. Well, can't we all be real? I mean, God's, hey, this is God's word, and if we're going to get help, this is where it's going to happen. Huh? How many times we try to do it our way and then wonder why it don't work out? Where's your investment? We need to get our investments right today. Huh? Lose the fear and get your investment in the correct place. Notice as we read on. Verse 33, Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not. What is it that faileth not? He tells us. My inheritance is not going to fail. Listen, I just want to say, when the stock market fails, my inheritance has not failed. <laughs> I mean, really. That, that's why I didn't have to get beside myself when the market dropped. Hey, did I lose money just like you did? Guess what? That's life. Because my investment, my eternal investment is not here, but it is there. But it is there. It will not change. What does he say? That faileth not where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupted, it cannot be stolen. I think about this. I think about how much the devil hates me. I'm serious. You know the devil hates you. But some of y'all need to wake up and realize he, he hates you. Huh? See, he's been, he'd been riding your back for a long time. Huh? Think about this. He knows, folks. He knows the doubts you got. He knows the troubles you face. Think about this. But as much as He hates you, He cannot touch your inheritance. Huh? I'm so glad to know He couldn't take me to hell if He wanted to. I said, let me say it again. He couldn't take me to hell if He wanted to. <laughs> oh, and He wants too bad, y'all. <laughs> but He can't do it. I'm covered in the blood. I say, I'm covered in the blood. Praise God. Praise God. Verse 33. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not. Own a treasure in the heavens that fell it not where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupted. Verse 34. Where your treasure is, there your heart be also. That's just true. I, I, what do we need to explain about that? Huh? Your investment equals your heart. Huh? It equals your heart every time. You're filled with the things of this world. Guess what? That's what's in you. That's what's going to come out of you. And listen, you can try to fake it till you make it, but it won't happen. You know what happens when you fake it till you make it? The truth comes out. Because God is truth. And He is revealing. Alright? He is revealing. So you can fake it and fake it and fake it. And that's why so many times, listen, people go to church 30 years, lost. Trying to make it. You'll never be good enough. <laughs> News flash. You'll never be good enough. It's when you give your heart and life to Christ. Oh, it's by His righteousness, folks, not our own. Not our own. Listen to me. Many times, think about this with me. Many times, we do not have the material things we desire in our heart because God knows what it would do to our heart. There's some, Y'all ain't got to say amen to that. I'm saying God protects you so many times from the material things of this world because He knows what it would do to you. I know that for a fact. These things I've wanted in my life. Hey, I've really wanted them. I told them this morning, there's a difference in want and need. Hello. We get it mixed up. There's a big difference in need and our wants. And many times we get them confused. But there's been so many times He's protected me from the material things of this world. You know what we need to do today is get the worldliness out of us. Get the worldliness out of us. Folks, we don't need it. You don't need it. Huh? I ask you again, is Christ enough? Is Christ enough? Fear not. 
Get your treasure in the right place. Number three. And for y'all that thinks we're leaving, there's four points, all right? I'll move as fast as I can, but we're going to get them all, right? Who in the world want to go to the cross and just stay there? He resurrected, amen? He resurrected. Okay, so we're going to go all the way. Here we are. Number three. Number three, verse 35. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Who said that? Check your Bible. Jesus did. I say Jesus did. Now look at here. Verse number 35. This is key, y'all. Because we've got a picture here. we got a picture here. Verse number 35. Let your loins be girded about. What does that mean? Well, listen, you know they wore a tunic or a robe back in the day, right? I even watched these diagrams about how they would do this, all right? And I got to tell you, it looks weird. I mean, it looks weird. For a dude to be doing this, it looks weird, all right? I'm just going to tell you. But, but you got to think about this, all right? I'm not going to be funny. But I mean, it is. It's pretty hilarious looking. I would never do it. Now, we're never going to do that here, all right? I mean, we're going to spiritually do it. We're going to spiritually do it, not physically do it, okay? But as they would do that, they would actually pull that thing. They would, they would pull it through their legs, all right? And they would bunch it up. Sir Don, you know where I'm going. They pull that thing up, right? And then they, then they uh, put it back under there because they get it real tight. They bunch it up with real tight. And it's like a diaper, okay? I mean, that's the best way I can say it, all right? Like a diaper. And then they pull that thing through the back. And they pull it real tight like that. I mean... It's got to be uncomfortable, all right? Got to be uncomfortable. But what they, then what they do is they take each side and they wrap it and they tie it in the front, all right? Everybody with me? Then you say, what's the point of them doing that? Well, go with me now. The robe is almost to the ground, maybe to the ground, right? Now, let me ask you something. How in the world could you run wearing a robe to the ground? Some of you guys go home, put on your wife's bathrobe and try to run in that thing. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, you can't do it. Maybe you got a robe. Ain't nothing wrong for a man to have man have bathrobe. All right, okay. I don't need to get into that one. All right, I personally ain't got one. You got one, that's fine. All right, but here we go. Some of y'all serious this morning. Y'all hurting. All right, y'all y'all need this. Okay, you get that thing tied up so you can move. Huh? What are we talking about? You see, he's called us to work. What do you mean? Well, that's what they would do. See, they would tie that thing up, get it away from their legs so they could actually go somewhere. They could actually do something. It is a call to work, but it's also a call to battle. A battle. Think about this. Number one, you see it with Jeremiah. All right? You only got to turn there. I'll read it for you. Jeremiah 117. Oh, yeah. We see it when God, hey, when God called him to service. Notice what he says in verse 17. Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I commanded thee. Be not dismayed at their faces lest I confound thee before them. It is a call to service. It is a call to work. God has not called you to stop and to sit and to sleep. I'm going to say it again. He not called you to sit and to sleep. Can I, there's way too many people today sleeping. All right, if it helps you, I'll look at the window. I said there's too many people sleeping, asleep at the wheel, thinking they're going to get where God wants them to go. Wait a minute, we're getting there. You see, all this goes together. Huh? It's about time we go to work. Huh? It's about time we go to work and stop complaining. Anybody, got, anybody a complainer? Actually, I ain't picking on you. I'm just, I just saw you. Anybody a complainer in the house of God this morning? I think we could all be honest. I think we could all be honest right now. I love to complain. When it's my turn to complain, I let loose on it. I don't stop till Kim tells me to. Huh? Ain't it about time we just zipped it and went to work? Because it's not about us. Hear me, church. I love you. It's not about us. It's all about God. It's all about where God wants us to be and how He wants us to get there. Now notice with me, it's one thing for the loins to be girded. 
But you got to have the second part of this. You got to have the second part of this. Notice with me. Oh, let me let me mention this. I want to hit this. Wait a minute. I want to hit this. We saw not only in the call to get to work, but in Ephesians. How many people know where I'm going? 614. The armor of God. Huh? What does he say? Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. I wanted to get there because guess what? If you ain't going to gird them up with truth, don't gird them up at all. Hear me. There's too many people running around with a bunch of nonsense today. You get caught up in that mess if you don't know who you are. You don't get into the Word of God, you'll get into somebody else's Word, and there's a lot of them out there. Hear me, it's not what I preach. I preach Jesus. huh? I preach Jesus. It's all about Him. If we're not ever in His Word, then we need to close the book. We need to close the book. God will not work apart from His Word. Hear me. It's a call to work. It's a call to battle. And if you ain't noticed, as dark as it is, we need truth. We need truth. Notice the second part of verse number 35. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Now you say, what is so important about the light? Let me remind you of John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light. I don't know about you, I've got the light of light. You know what the difference is? So many people, their light is dim today. Hear me. You've bought in and you've listened to what the world has to say. Maybe, hey, maybe it's just the talking that you've heard. Maybe it's the sin that you might be involved in. Boy, can't we admit we're all sinners? What's a good place to start, isn't it? We need the light, folks. You see, there's a lot of people running around. They've got, hey, they've got the loins girded up. There's a bunch of religions. Go with me. <laughs> Hear me. Hey, I say this in love. People need to get saved. There's a lot of religions. Boy, they've got the loins girded up. But there is no light in them. You know who I'm talking about. And they'll beat, listen, They'll, they'll, beat the, they'll beat the Christian to death as far as service. Let's be real. I mean, seriously. I look around and I'm like, my goodness. Work circles around us. Hear me? Why is it ones that don't even have the light can do more than we do? I'm glad you asked. It's because we've suppressed the light. And because we've allowed the light to be suppressed. Hear me. I, you know what? I don't get no joy in saying that. Can we all agree? I do not get any a joy in saying that. But examine your own life. Examine what's going on around you. And you tell me that's not true. You tell me that's not true. Because I know it's true. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen the testimony of it. Preacher, are you talking about me? No, I'm talking about all of us. I'm talking about every one of us. Hey, from here to there. Huh? And those that are watching at home, I have no idea who's on. But it applies. It applies. We've got to have the loins girded up. We've got to have the light burning. The light burning. Folks, not your light or my light, but His light. Why? Because He is the light. If somebody is to be saved, it will be because Jesus saved them. Listen, as the church, we get beside ourselves thinking we don't understand why somebody not getting saved or why people won't listen to do what God tells them to do. Listen, it's not based on what I want, but what God wants. And anybody surrender to me or a deacon or a Sunday school teacher, guess what? They've wasted their time. It's all in vain. It's when we go before God and we surrender to Him that He can do something in our life. And that's what He wants to do today. But you know what? It won't happen unless you let it happen. Huh? That word let comes up over and over and over and over again. Why? Because we play a part in it. You see, God, yes, God's got a plan for us. 
We saw that. Yes, God tells us what we need to do in fearing not. We know what He says. We know we need to get our priorities straight and our investment in the right place. We know we need to gird up our loins. We know that we need to let the light be bright. But the fact is, we have to do it. We have to do it. And ain't we talked about it long enough? It's time to act on it. To act on it. Preacher, I need encouragement today. There you go. There you go. What more could possibly be said? Jesus has done it all. Jesus has done it all. You know, I think about how much God loves us, and I, I, I can't even wrap my head around it. I mean, there'll be a day when I know, when my faith will become sight. But when I really think about it, and I survey in my mind, all that God does for me, how much He loves me, why is it that He has to pry it out of me? I don't think I'm just talking about myself. Why does He have to pry it out of me? Isn't it time for the people of God just to say, I love God. I'm going to focus on what He wants. I mean, mean, wasn't it enough when He sent His Son? We act like we're waiting on something greater to happen. There's nothing greater that could have happened and did happen. It's all been done. So if we're living in bondage today, it's not on His account, it's on ours. It's on ours. I think we need to seek Him today. I think we need to seek Him today. And He's here to work on us. I'm going to ask you something. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Can you honestly say you examined your heart today? Can you honestly say you examined your heart today? And if you did, what did God do in your heart? You say, preacher, I didn't get nothing but anger. Well, you need to talk to Him about it. Why is it that we'll live miserable lives away from Him? I think about the time that I have spent in my own life running from the Lord when all He wanted to do was the very best for me. I wonder if that's you today. I wonder today, are you one of the ones bound up with fear? Are you one of the ones that's been taking it easy? Won't you come talk to Him about it? Truth be told today, you might be here and you don't even belong to Him. Don't you think it's time that you surrender to Him? I think God, we ain't got to be afraid to pray. That we ain't got to be afraid to talk to Him. We ain't got to be afraid to give it to Him. Heavenly Father, God, I thank You for this day that You've given us. God, I thank You for Your precious Word, God. God, I pray, God, as we've walked in, God, worshiped You and examined our heart. God, I pray You show us exactly what needs to be dealt with in our heart. God, show us where our investment is. God, that we'd be right before You. God, help us today to draw close to You. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you would, stand. We're gonna, listen, we're going to sing, and we sing every time. Why don't we act? Why don't we act this morning? How long has it been? Mm. Let's sing it together this morning. How long has it been since you 
today that he cares for you you know many times well we know this world lets us down <laughs> anybody and sometimes truth is we let each other down right we don't have to admit it but it's real I mean it's real my point is it's easy to get disappointed it's easy to get discouraged. But it's Jesus who cares for us. It's Jesus who's always there for us. Amen. And I don't know about you, brother. I think about that prayer away. Prayer away from being right. Prayer away from being saved. Prayer, prayer away from being in fellowship with God. Can I tell you, there's no greater place to be than in fellowship with God. And that access is available to you and I because of who He is. 
We didn't get there, but the, but the rest of the passage going down to where I read. Listen, He's coming back, folks. He's coming back just like He said. Are you saved? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Will He find you limping to glory? Or will He be able to say, well done, good and faithful servant. It's up to our surrender. He's God. Has, is, and always will be. May we surrender to Him. Listen, church, I love you. But don't you leave this place today with your need not met. We say need not met. What does that mean? Don't you leave it on the table, what God's done in your heart. Because you know what will happen. You'll go out those doors. And listen, I know it's late. We will dismiss in just a moment. All right? How easy it is to go out those doors and forget about what God's done in here. Hear me. You say, I'll wait till later. You never will. Hear me. I've been there, done that. You never will. The time to do business with God is in here. While He's working. While He's calling. While He's calling. I tell you this, we're going to close out. We're going to sing one verse. We're going to close out. If nobody comes, guess what? We close it. We close it. Amen? All right? Will you come? Last verse. 